Alan Weisglass tells us the story of his family coming to Staten Island and beginning the Weisglass Dairy. Uh, 1890s, Grandpa m must have come over from Poland, Russia, Austria, depending on whose history you believe, and uh, went to work for Luchow's, which was a German restaurant on 14th Street uh, in Manhattan and became a very famous restaurant. And um, he was a busboy, and they would send him to Staten Island to buy horseradish from the farmers that were out here. And he liked it very much, so he got an uncle who must have been a sponsor originally, and they bought some land uh, and started a farm uh, in about 1895, 1896, here on Staten Island, um, off in the uh, Crystal Avenue in, in that area. Uh, and uh, then they bought the land that where the dairy was uh, put, which was a working farm with 12 cows. It was interesting enough, uh, at some point we saw the mortgage on the 12 cows because they didn't have the money to buy them, obviously. Um, and, uh, but he only stayed in milking cows, as far as I could tell him, for about a year. He must have found out that's even more difficult than delivering milk by horse and buggy. Um, and then he went out of the business and then came back in, I'm going to say about 1899, and uh, started buying milk from upstate in cans and, and delivering it to customers in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, and that grew into what, what became Weissglass Dairy. Um, at one point, we had about 40 uh, home delivery routes on Staten Island and, and uh, several uh, store routes. Yes. We had at one point five uh, receiving plants upstate New York. The, the farmers would take it to the, the plant, the receiving plant, mm -hmm. um, and then the big tankers would come and pick it up there and drive it down Route 17. Yes. And it would get pasteurized and uh, uh, bottled and eventually when it technology caught up, homogenized at the plant in, in Staten Island. Uh, and I used to say in, in any city in the world except New York, we would be a big milk plant, but in, in New York City, we were just a moderate-sized milk plant because of the volumes. Um, served mostly St Staten Island. Eventually, before the Second World War, we had some routes in, in Brooklyn, home delivery routes. And when uh, the gas rationing came, they had to stop taking those, uh, those routes. Those routes, by the way, went on the 69th Street ferry to get to Brooklyn. I mean, it was no bridge. No, no bridge. <laughs> um, in 1941, they bought an ice cream plant, which was also in Mariners Harbor, Gold Seal Ice Cream. And uh, as I was growing up in the summers, I worked in the ice cream plant. And one summer I worked in the milk plant uh, as a, as a um, uh, manual labor, uh, taking the bottles off the line and putting them in cases and schlepping the cases and all the stuff you do, reserves. Um, and went to work as a uh, assistant executive with a uh, good deal of responsibility, which uh, my uncle who was running it and my, uh, my father, uh, and, and I learned from there. It was a pure family business and I learned from there. Uh, well, like all, uh, most people, uh, as they get older, you look back, and I think uh, the uh, Curtis High School experience yeah. and the people that I worked with there and met there, and uh, the fact that I played basketball, learned that you play with all kinds of people and teamwork, and uh, it depends how you do on the court, not what you, where you come from or how much money you have or anything else. It's all the people. I think it's the good we've tried to do. In, in some cases, it's obvious, like this beautiful building. Uh, in some cases, it's not so obvious. Um, I'm proud of uh, I'm proud of what we've done. Uh, I'm proud of my family and, and how we've grown up. My uh, my granddaughter is working for the borough president um, and doing good work and enjoying it, which is just as important. And I think she does me proud, so I'm very pleased. She's uh, keeping up the family tradition.